This is Tim Willis, armed only with a copy of OBS and a built-in laptop microphone. This is another video from the Nomad Funnel Hacker. So, sometime about a week ago, I released a video on how to install the desktop version of Photoshop Express by Adobe on your computer. So, having gone through that, we ended the video at that point. And now we're going to pick it up with part two and show how to use Photoshop Express. So, that's what we will be doing today. So, I'm at my computer. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my list of programs and we will go to the A's. And so when you install Photoshop Express on your computer, it also installs Adobe Creative Cloud on the computer. And unlike the case with Adobe Express, Photoshop Express and Adobe Creative Cloud both reside as programs on your computer that we you can go to in your list of programs. Go to Adobe Photoshop Express and watch that. When you first see it, it's going to give you two choices of a pictures library or a camera. If you choose camera, it's just going to be the camera on your device. Or we can go to our pictures library. You can go to your pictures folder, desktop, wherever you want to go. In this case, I've created a little folder with some photos that we're going to use today. Let's go ahead and start with this uh, ocean one and open it up. So when we look at Photoshop Express, we'll see that it has the working area in the center. We have a toolbar where most of the tools are located on the left-hand side. We also have a smaller toolbar at the top here. So most of our action is going to be happening on this left side toolbar. So we have this section called Looks. And this is basically a bunch of filters for your photographs that you can do various things. Some are just to make them look better. Some are to apply effects. But we'll go through a few of these. So we'll start with the basic. Now the thing to notice about this section, everything under looks and every subsection under looks has a setting called normal. This allows you to return back to your original picture. So if we choose, for example, this one called invert. Well, obviously that's not our original picture. The first way is we have undo and redo buttons here at the top toolbar. So we just click the undo button and get back to where we were. The other way we can do that is let's use this one called Silvered. We can go back up to the top of the basic subsection and click on Normal and that brings us also back to our original picture. But just remember you always have those ways to get back home. We have a section called Black and White here which has a lot of distress style settings. So we can go here for something like one of these sepia tones or antique or we could go to the selenium and whatever you want to do once again we could go click on our undo button a couple of times or we can just go back to our normal and get back to zero that's enough of that section we have a portrait section which we'll put different sections on there. Now, I really didn't get a picture for, that's appropriate for our appropriate section, but let's go ahead and try one of these so you can get that kind of look or that kind of look which doesn't look too good. Or that. Normally, you would use portrait setting for something with people. Now, we don't have any people but the guy with the red eyes so that we're going to use for the red eye tool, so no people to work with. We have this other one called Pop Color. Here's another one that you can list your colors somewhat, basically color filters, so like this red, purple, whatever. Once again, play around with it. Choose Normal, get back to where you were. And then we have at the bottom here the Duotone, which is a specific kind of filter, which also uses colors. And you'll see sometimes this used in artistic works. And we'll just go back to Normal, and that's it. Basically, so basically, our look section is just a bunch of filters. Next we have our crop section which does more than crop. We have a crop tool here of course. We can also rotate left or rotate right. We can flip horizontally or flip vertically. We can straighten the photo. In this case it was already straight so it makes it angled. And we can also choose these 
preset aspect ratios for certain things like an Instagram post and then we can always get back using our undo button there is no normal setting here in this setting but it's just a basic crop tool but you can always just grab the corner here make it smaller move it where, however you want want that size and you probably used something like this before so that is the crop section next we have the adjustment section now this is similar to our section up here called looks except it doesn't have a normal setting under the subsections so you'll so to get back to normal you'll either have to use the undo button at the top toolbar or you'll have to use the slider and return it to zero because the slider is what's going to determine the amount of adjustment you make for things like contrast or shadows and things like that so let's go ahead and look at contrast when we click on it there's no difference it's right now we're set to zero if we move it up we increase the contrast if we move to negative we decrease the contrast again we can get to back to where we were by clicking the undo button or we can get back to where we were by going back to zero truthfully probably easier to do this to the, the uh, undo button alright then we have various other things here under the light section or light subsection we create have a color section so you can mess with your tint your saturation things like that you have an effect section and so you can do things like um, grain clarity different things so let's do the grain right now unlike the other one, ones we did the zero is set all the way to the left not in the middle so it only has a positive number setting but if we crank it up we do see the grain effect happening and then we can just move it back to zero or click the undo button to get it back to where we were below that we have another subsection called details again that's basically your sharpen tools below that we have a split tone section which is basically uh, messing with the color using filters and then below that we have the blur section where you can get your blur and you basically have a radial or a full blur you're going to select it and then move your slider to set the amount of blur you want and that is going to be pretty much it for our correction section below that we have a heel tool so we're going to go ahead and get out of this picture we're not going to save it and let's go pick up another picture here and we'll pick this one here go to our heel tool now we can set the brush size here it's 10 pixels right now we can go all the way up to 100 pixels what the spot heel tool does is if you have a blemish on your photo or something you want to kind of get rid of it will try to mix it in with what's surrounding it on the photograph so I'm going to target this area right here on the wall there's a kind of white horizontal somebody scraped it or something and we're going to go ahead and we're going to try let's try a 20 we're just going to run it there and sometimes it's kind of doesn't like working so let's go ahead and do that okay now if you look real close it's kind of hard to see might be hard to see you see that now we're clicking on here and we're getting it to blend in and we see that it did get rid of that horizontal line but we see the other problem with the spot heel tool depending on the size of brush you set is now it's pulling this plate from over here and placing images of it on the wall so just to try to click some more try to get rid of that okay we look pretty good now so that is the spot heel tool it's pretty cool uh, for getting rid of blemishes or things you just don't want in a picture as long as you have some kind of wall or something like that that you can blend it in with okay we're back to our choices camera picture library we're going to choose this guy who has red eyes because we're now going to use the red eye tool so you have a choice between people and pets let's go ahead and hit this guy up 
with the people. So we're going to go ahead and click that eyeball. And did a decent job. You can click it again, try to get a little more. How about this eyeball over here? Again, it does get rid of red. It not necessarily making the most realistic pupil if you are looking close, but it definitely gets rid of that, that uh, freaky red eye look. So that's a nice thing to have. And then down here below that, we have our frame section. Let's go ahead and switch out pictures again. I won't save this one. And we will pick out. Uh, let's pick out our Moroccan shop here. This is another Moroccan one. Got some nice colors. So for our frames, we again have a normal uh, setting that we can get back to. And so we can choose different frames here. So for example, we could choose this black circle frame. Or we could choose this thin frame. And in this case, being a rectangle image, it makes a rectangular frame. Uh, we can do a vertical strip where we just have it on the sides and so forth. And then we can get back to normal. We also have edges, which will mess with the edges, so we can make the edges look like a film strip. Or we can make it look like, um, let's see, a rough edge here. Looks like it kind of like it got pulled out of the trash. Um, edge stroke, what does that look like? Okay, got this kind of coloration on the side. So again, these kind of different effects you can apply to a picture. And then finally, our last subsection here is the frames themselves. And so these are like actual picture type frames. So if you want a matte kind of look, you can do it like that. You can also do a wood, dark wood, whatever you want to do. And that is that and that is most of what's going to be on the left hand side toolbar there is a settings section um, it doesn't have many that settings you can set your image resize to original or something else and you can set your JPEG quality however you want the quality to be and that's basically all there is there alright let's go to our top toolbar here real quick and let's go ahead and go back to our basic section we're going to go ahead and get rid of this one here, too. And load up another picture. And we will go with uh, this desert lightning scene. So let's go ahead to our look section. And let's go ahead and choose something in black and white. And we will pick out this uh, one right here, which actually isn't a bad picture. You took a bunch of that kind of uh, reddish kind of color out. Definitely doesn't look as desert as before. And, but now here's what we can do. We can go here on this icon called Viewing Original. And we can flip back and forth between the original and our alteration. We also have a zoom tool here where you can use a slider and make things bigger. And then we have here, let's go back to our original here, this, uh, what do they call it? Auto enhance, so the little magic wand thing. So we click on that, it's going to try to auto enhance the picture based on some algorithm. And that's really all we've got too much on the top toolbar the only other thing we have here is you can go ahead and save it this way one other thing we need to talk about with uh, Photoshop Express probably not too surprising is that you do need to be connected to the internet now in my situation I'm living in a guest house and I get my Wi-Fi signal off the main house and so some days it's good some days it's not today it's kind of in between and so while we were doing this video I'd lost the Wi-Fi signal and off camera I reconnected and just be aware that you know you do lose the Wi-Fi signal or your internet that you might then Photoshop Press might disappear off the screen because it's looking for that and part of 
reason for that is it does connect with the Creative Cloud application that was also installed at the time you installed Photoshop Express. So that's our walkthrough of the things you can do with Adobe Photoshop Express, the free version. I think it's worth having um, just to do touch-ups on your pictures and all that. And since it's free, Adobe Quality, Photo Editor, why not? So this is Tim Willis. I'm a certified ClickFunnels phone builder. I make tutorial and demonstration videos on ClickFunnels, sales funnel building, and graphical tools that we use along with those activities like Photoshop Express, the free version. That's the video for now. I will talk to you later.